I'm speaking today to Arul, the Deputy President of the Socialist Party of Malaysia, about some recent developments uh, that uh, seem to offer the prospect of greater unity between progressive parties in Malaysia. First of all, can you explain um, what led up to uh, this um, uh, approach or overture by the new leadership of the uh, People's Party of Malaysia or PRM? Uh, to towards not only to the PSM but also to Muda and other parties uh, to work together. Uh, Rohana Arifin, who who has been actually previously a close ally of PSM, she has recently been appointed as the president of the party after an extraordinary meeting held, and uh, you see the, the the president of PRM passed away. And what, what happened was a person, a, a, another person was appointed to the position without going through uh, the party process, you know. He was not appointed to the president. So uh, Rohana, I mean, uh, then another extraordinary meeting was called recently where Rohana was um, chosen to be the party president. This was... Um, widely um, it was a news because there was there's not much about PRM lately in the media you know but again um, the the any appointment of leadership or whatever has to go goes through the register of society the ROS so there's another faction which is by the previous uh, secretary general who who is challenging this so it is so this dispute may continue you know um, this leadership crisis may continue but it appears to me that rohana has the support of the majority of the members because most of the people who were in the party are still there you know it's not like completely a different group of people rohana was uh, in the central leadership of the prm for some time in the past is that correct See, Rohana has been in PRM for many years, but then when we started the left coalition, she was one of the person instrumental to the left coalition where she raised, uh, she actually proposed this during, uh, in the PSM Congress, actually, as an observer from her party, she proposed it that we should have a left coalition. And she was also one of the few peop the people in the committee to draft the left coalition uh, document. So after that, in a very in a in a simple majority, her party opposed joining the left coalition, and she resigned as the president. She and the secretary then, uh, Jeffrey, both of them resigned from the party, and she has since been an ordinary member. Resigned from the party leadership, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, she resigned as the president mm. and the secretary at that time was Jeffrey. He also resigned. Mm. Now, can you uh, explain a bit about the um, historical significance in the Malaysian Malayan left of the PRM and its, pre its historical predecessors? You see, PRM is one of the oldest surviving parties. You know, if you look from independence, uh, it was founded in 1955 by uh, Bustamam, uh, Ahmad Bustamam, one of the uh, one of very um, one of the legend in Malaysian uh, left politics, Ahmad Bustamam. The party through went through a lot. And then they together with the Labour Front Party formed the Socialist Front, which was the largest opposition at at that time in the in 1957 upon independence. But after that, the party went through a various uh, cycles. You see, one was um, after the Labour Party was uh, um, what do you call that? Barred, you know, the Labour Party was uh, banned. Banned, correct. That's mm -hmm. the right word. When after the Labour Party was banned, uh, PRM uh, took what they call uh, scientific socialism. They called themselves then PSRM, Party Socialist Rakyat Malaysia. Then uh, after the Iranian revolution, they took something like Islamic socialism, a, a certain diversion. 
Then in the 89, the, you know, when the collapse of the Eastern Europe, collapse of the Soviet, they then uh, disbanded the word socialist and became PRM. And then they merged with, with Anwar's party, Parti Kadilan National, formed a merger called uh, Parti Kadilan Rayat. But a number of people in PRM disagreed with the merger and they went back to the Registrar of Society and, and said they are still a member of PRM, you know. So PRM then continued. So it was it became very small, uh, lot of factions became smaller and smaller. In recent years, many people joined the party. So it, 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 even in the last election, the current deputy chair of um, uh, deputy president of PRM, Izam, was formerly with AMNO, then he joined PKR. He declared that PRM is not a socialist. We don't believe in socialism, you know, and that created a lot of issues. And uh, Rohana criticized him openly and said, "What is this?" You know. So Rohana, one thing Rohana in her speech, as a as the new president said, will stick with ideologically, will stick with socialism. Everybody can just come and join, become a member, and become stand in election because in recent uh, years. Anybody can who wants to be to stand in election, they just join the PRM. Use their they can they don't need to have any ideological bearing. So this is what so Rohana seems to have said we are we are we are ideological party, we are socialists, we will work with PSM, Muda, because Muda and PSM seem to be had an election, electoral pact during the last election. And they'll work with civil society like Bersi and all that. Now, what is the importance of um, these this sort of progressive alliance in the current situation that you are facing in Malaysia? What... Malaysian politics is coalition politics. No single party can win elections. As such, the two currently we have the Unity Party, the, they call it the Madani government, which is actually a two big coalition: the Barisan National, the United Front who have been ruling for 60 years, and then Pakatan Harapan, which was the main opposition, they are the ruling elite. So the former opposite, uh, ruling party and then uh, Pakatan Harapan are currently the new ruling party. And the opposition is mainly seen as more an Islamic bloc because it's led by PAS, but they have other, uh, Gerakan is with them. And they are a, quite a strong opposition. They run a number of, uh, they control a number of states. So the, the, the in Malaysian politics, it is now seen very polarized politics. They talk about Islamic uh, forces or what they call the green forces versus the, the other, the unity government. No? But both of them are capitalists in nature. They believe in uh, neoliberal capitalism. So we need the left. There's no left now. We need a, a left coalition. And that is why it's important to build a united uh, left coalition, you know, with whichever parties. The left coalition is quite weak, actually. But it's time that, you know, we have to work with. If Rohana, with the new look PRM, with PSM and with Munda, maybe we should try to work on a, a coalition or a third force. And, and that's what we aspire to be. And what? historically, mm -hmm. uh, there were there were two big uh, left coalitions. Mm -hmm. Before independent, independent, it was Putra AMCJA, which founded the People's Constitution. It was the biggest opposition. The British have to declare an emergency to dismantle them. Then you had post-election, the Socialist Front, also a very big, strong uh, left opposition. They used the Internal Security Act, arrested them, closed them down. So we are now without any left party. I mean, in any left coalition to fight the two powers we have today. Now, what would you see as some of the most uh, important issues or the key issues that, that uh, these progressive parties could unite on and perhaps run on a common uh, platform? I think one is, of course, uh, class-based issues, you know, and um, one one thing which we are quite united is on the question of, uh, you see, the, the current debate between the two parties is 
each calling each other corrupted party, you see, because the Anwar's camp is saying that the other party is corrupted, they are saying the same thing with Anwar's camp. Because Amno is with Am Amno is with Anwar, you know. So on people's agenda, like the question of uh, workers, workers' issues, besides that local government election, both the parties are not propagating local local government elections, which we we the left would be pushing for local government election. So other uh, benefits like workers, uh, public health care, I think this would be the issues which we have to bring up, which will go against the current major issues in the country. You know, it's called the three R: race, religion, royalty. Hmm. These are the three issues which hmm. is. Dominating Malaysian politics all this while. While there's so, uh, while there's a lot of debate around those three issues, what is the economic uh, uh, conditions and situation confronting the ordinary people? There is a lot of external news reports about uh, the volatility of the ringgit collapsing ringgit. How does this translate? into the ordinary experience of people? Does it affect the cost of living? Yeah, actually, we have a, we are going through a serious, uh, very high inflation now. It's because also a lot of imported goods due to the very st uh, strong drop in the ringgit. So it, there is clear hardship all over. And the wages have not gone up. This year, they're supposed to review the minimum wage. But the government is sidestepping it. They're talking about another model called progressive uh, wage model, which is not compulsory, which is uh, only in... Um, so they're just trying to divert attention to that. Um, so the government is not haven't really addressed the issue of workers, wages, inflation. And uh, recently, they increased the... Uh, uh, sales tax from 6 to 8%. And a lot of this, this thing, they just started on 1st May, first of March. A lot of this is going to hit back on, going to increase the inflation further. So on, uh, and there is no, uh, government workers are going to lose pension because the government can't pay pensions anymore. So they are talking about, uh, employing part-time government workers and then going through EPF. EPF, there's a big crisis. So this, EPF, is the, the, this is the compulsory superannuation for only some yes. workers, right? It doesn't, not every yeah. worker gets this access See, to it's EPF. It's a compulsory scheme. If you're a worker, you should be getting a mm. employer's a contribution. Fund. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a right. But only 40% of Malaysian workers get EPF. Mm. Mm. And the younger workers, a recent study shows only those aged 30 years and below, only 18% of them are covered under EPF because most of them are like informal workers, gig workers and mm. all that. So that, that is a, a serious thing. And the government has said most workers, uh, upon retiring, they will finish their re, uh, EPF money within five years. That means they can take out the money at the age of 55. They will, by 60, they won't have any more money left. Malaysia is becoming slowly an uh, aging society, you know, and and uh, so we can't handle the EPF, and the younger people are uh, paid low, and they and they don't have social security.